Hey guys, it's Ryan with AIinsidertips.com. Just want to bring you a quick video today letting you know about Google releasing Gemini, which is the newest, largest, and most capable AI model. Now, me and several others have been waiting for Google to make this announcement of Google Gemini, and I will leave a link to their official press release in the video description below. Before diving into the details, guys, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel at AI Insider Tips, I would truly appreciate that as I spend hours bringing you these news, videos, reviews, and everything to keep you updated in the overall overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. So I would greatly appreciate that. So I first heard about this story actually on Google's Twitter account. They posted this tweet here, Gemini barred with the hand, you know, handshake emoji. And it says, starting today, our, our specifically tuned version of Gemini Pro is available in Bard, unlocking new ways to collaborate with AI. Next year, we're introducing Bard Advanced with Gemini Ultra for even more complex tasks. Now, what's really interesting here is I saw news articles. This came out on December 4th. Basically, it's talking about how Google was postponing the launch of Bard uh, due to non-English query challenges, among other things going on behind the scenes. So it's just interesting to me that there were these recent articles from other news sources talking about Google's delaying Gemini due to all these things going on. But then Google comes out today on you know December 6th and releases Gemini, the first iteration of Gemini that is to the public. So on their official press release here, there's a lot of details and I'm not gonna go through every single thing here. Uh, just wanna point out the important highlights here. So here's Google's CEO. He has a, a lot of quotes in this press release. Um, it says, AI has been my focus of my life's work, as for many of my research colleagues. And then he talks about how AI has always been one of his passions and how it can benefit humanity in incredible ways. And he says, today we built, we're a step closer to this version as we introduce Gemini, the most capable and general model we've ever built. Gemini is the result of large-scale collaborative efforts by teams across Google, including our colleagues at Google Research. It was built from the ground to be multimodal, which means it can generalize and seamlessly understand, operate across, and combine different types of information, including text, code, audio, image, and video. Now, I actually went ahead and tried to ask Google Bar to see if Gemini could create AI-generated images, um, and it could not do that. And I'm actually going to show you this in real time here soon. They do have a special video here on the Google YouTube YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below as well. I would suggest watching this four-minute video as it goes through, you know, the basic details of Gemini and how this was created, and just words from the CEO on what his thoughts are onto the future of all this. Um, so as I go back to the press release and I scroll down, it talks about how Gemini 1.0 has three different sizes. This is one of the important parts here. Gemini Ultra, Gemini Pro, and Gemini Nano. So Gemini Ultra is the largest and most capable model for complex tasks. Gemini Pro is the best model for scaling a wide range of tasks. And Gemini Nano is the most efficient model for on-device tasks. And then it goes down and compares Gemini Ultra, which again is the largest and most capable model for highly complex tasks against the most popular language model today, which is GBT4, which powers chat GBT and other AI tools. So here it talks about the description here. So in the description on this benchmark, it talks about this MMLU and then there's all sorts of these confusing things. Um, but if you read the description, basically what this is doing is it's testing these language models with STEM, so humanities, so science, math questions, um, challenging tasks, comprehension score, uh, everyday reasoning tasks, uh, arithmetic, math problems, Python code generation, that one's big down here. But the three categories here are reasoning, math, and code. So when comparing Gemini Ultra to GBT4, uh, according to Google, now there is a lot of bias here, so I'm not sure you know how much stake I would put in a report like this coming from Google. It is their AI model after all. Um, but according to Google here, it has a 90% compared to 86.4% to GPT-4. Now it did perform better, it looks like in reasoning in a couple categories, um, but math it performed better in as well and also code. So you know, all you Python coders out there, if you test GPT-4 versus Google Gemini, this first iteration of the language model, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts as that's not really in my wheelhouse, so I can't comment on that. Um, and then if you also scroll down, it's talking about image, video, and audio. So according to Google, again, Gemini is outperforming GPT-4 um, in all of these different categories. So I'll have to make an in-depth video in the future when Gemini is officially rolled out with all the different capabilities and models and compare that to the most advanced model of GPT-4 Turbo. 
So that's a future video. And it goes in to talk about all these different next generation capabilities with sophisticated reasoning, understanding text, images, and audio, advanced coding, and it gives videos for each circumstance here. Um, it's more reliable, scalable, and efficient, according to them, um, built with responsibility and safety at the core, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then it just scrolls down and gives all these other details here. So if I pull up Google Bard, and again, this is a completely free AI tool. All you need is a Google account to start using Bard. Um, if I pull up Bard, one of the first things I see is this latest update message. So if you click up here and click help, you'll see this option that says updates. So here it talks about how on today, December 6th, Bard is getting the biggest upgrade yet with Gemini Pro. Starting today, we're introducing Gemini Pro and Bard, Bard's biggest update yet. And then it goes on to give this official press release link here. Um, but then it just talks about how, you know, what Gemini can do inside of Bard now. So summarizing, reasoning, coding, and planning. You can try out Bard with Gemini Pro for text-based prompts with support for other mod modalities coming soon. Now, this is important as I, before this video, tried to have Bard create me an image and it could not do that. So I think that's what they mean here. It'll be available in English in more than 170 countries and territories and come to more languages, places like Europe in the near future. So I'm not sure if this is only available to Bard users in the United States. That looks like the case right now, um, but it says more than 170 countries and territories to start. So obviously it's you know in other places around the world. So probably Canada, um, the United Kingdom, things of that nature. So if I go back to Bard, um, let's just try a quick prompt because I want to compare the, the images are really big. I use Dolly 3 inside ChatGBT all the time. Um, so I, if I say create me an image of a dog, just something very basic. Um, I'm curious to see what it's going to say here because when I first tried this again, yeah, it says I can't create images yet. So I'm not able to help you with that. So it's still obviously in beta mode and in development. Um, but what's really interesting, guys, is if I go to Google, I have a couple of videos that talk about this. Google search generative experience can actually generate AI images in search. So if I go to Google search, click create me an image of a dog, you'll see that it generates AI images inside Google search results. So my question there is, how can Google generate images in the SGE Google search results, but yet they can't generate images inside of the barred chat bot? That's just a, a question that I have that I don't fully understand. Um, so that's the first thing, but even going back in here, if I can ask it something, you know, a recency prompt. So Google Bard's always been good with recency. I can say, what is the price of Bitcoin? And it should give me some sort of recency response as it is connected through Google search results. And I do appreciate the output as well. That took literally a second, if half a second to produce that. So it says as of today, Wednesday, December 6th, 1055. CST, which is the exact time that I prompted this, it's giving me the price of Bitcoin. So again, always great with recency prompts. Now, if I do something more complex and I click new chat, I can just ask it to critically think. I'll say, you know, do you think the price of Bitcoin will increase next year? Something to give it a little more critical thinking. I'm just curious to see what it's going to say. And it says, you know, whether or not the price of Bitcoin will increase next year is a complex question with no definitive answer. However, there are several factors. So then it gives positive and negative factors. And then it also points to resources um, according to Google search results that it's pulling through. So not a bad response as it's giving both sides of the story. Um, so I like that. But again, guys, I'm going to start testing this again here um, after I publish this video and just maybe come back with a more in-depth tutorial when I start to explore Gemini and all of its other features. So guys, one last thing I wanna check out with Google Bard and the addition of Gemini is the ability to interpret images. So if I upload an image that shows the homepage of my website at AIinsiderTips.com and then provide a prompt like this, this is the homepage of my website, can you provide any feedback that would help my SEO and user experience? So ChatGBT Vision came out a couple months ago where you can do this inside ChatGBT and it's now available for everyone, even the free plan. Um, so I'm curious to see now what this is going to say. So it says, sure, here's some feedback on the homepage of your website that would help your SEO and user experience. So it gives specifics here, it gives the title tag, um, this is a bit too general. I agree with that. A meta description. Your description is currently empty. That is a missed opportunity. Well, I need to go fix that for sure. Header tags, image alt text, internal linking. 
And then it gives me some specific UX stuff like the hero section, navigation menu, content, images, call to action. Overall, your website is well designed and informative. If ever you can make some small changes to improve, I hope this feedback is helpful. And again, that is helpful because instead of just saying general advice or general you know, things I should change, I do like how it broke it down into specifics and gave me actionable things that I can take away and actually implement on my website. So that's it, guys. Again, just wanted to give you a quick overview of Google Gemini, and I'm very curious to see where the AI race is going to go from here. Again, this is Ryan with AI Insider Tips. Appreciate you all watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts about Google Gemini in the comments below if you started to use it on Bard. And I hope you all have a great day.